Hey guys, how you doing? It's DJ Jason Hooper, and this week I'm bringing you a product review of the Bose S1 Pro. Stick around. Hey guys, thanks for stopping by. I'm DJ Jason Hooper, and on this channel I show you how to get more gigs, make more money, and be more professional as a DJ. This week I'm going to bring you a review of a speaker that I absolutely love the Bose S1 Pro, and I'm going to go through the technical specs and the practical applications that I use it for, that you could use it for, and just really nail down why I love this speaker. But first, I'd like to remind you guys to subscribe if you haven't, and hit the bell notification so you're alerted when I put out new videos, which is every week. I'd also like to take a second to welcome all the new subscribers, and if you haven't yet, go check out my last video, which actually features this speaker. So let's get into it. I love this speaker. I bought it so I could do wireless battery operated ceremonies for my clients. And it also serves as a really nice satellite or fill speaker at my events. I also use it as a monitor when I'm practicing at home because it's really small and easy to do that with. And as such, I definitely recommend it to any DJ who's looking for a battery operated reliable speaker. Now it comes in at $599 on Amazon.com and I found that price to be con pretty consistent across the um, different vendors and different websites who sell this. The key features are obviously that it is battery operated. Bose says that you can get 11 hours out of a full charge. I'm not entirely sure if you can get 11 hours, but I've gotten six easily, which covers most any event or any purpose that I'm ever gonna use this for. I believe you could probably get 11 hours if you're just streaming Bluetooth from your iPad or phone or something. When I'm using it as a fill speaker for my weddings, it's usually working a little bit harder than that because the music is a little bit louder. But I don't know if you've gotten 11 hours out of your Bose. If you have this speaker, leave me a comment down below and let me know. It has a three channel mixer on board, so you've got two channels that are basically the same with a combo XLR quarter inch jack on the main inputs, reverb, bass adjustment, treble adjustment, and your main uh, gain adjustment, or your main output volume adjustment. The third channel has an auxiliary input with an eighth inch mini jack, Bluetooth connection button, and also this checks your battery, and uh, also a level here. It has a quarter inch TRS output, so you could connect this to another speaker if you'd like. And uh, it has a service port here. I'm guessing that this would be for Bose's use and not ours. Down below, we've got the output for your power cable and your on switch, off, and then a fast charge function down. Now, one thing I forgot to mention about the three channel mixer is two of the channels have the Bose tone match functions here where you can optimize the channel to better fit the input that you're using. So two of the channels have an optimization for guitar and vocals. And I don't believe that this changes the power of the input or the impedance. I believe it is Bose proprietary tone match technology that just tailors the sound through an EQ algorithm to make the source that you're using sound as good as it can. I've never even messed with these switches. I always keep them off. However, I should say that I haven't used this for really anything other than music playback as a DJ. So it might be useful for you guys. It might not. Now I can't find how long it takes to charge this battery fully on any Bose literature. Uh, there are two charging modes. However, one is just in standby mode. When you have it plugged into the wall, it's always charging. So it's going to charge. And then once it's done, it will just stop and use the power that's coming from the wall, obviously. And the second mode here is if you click down, it's a fast charge mode, which evidently charges your battery a little bit faster if you're in a time crunch. So to check the battery level here, you have to press the Bluetooth button twice, and this thing is gonna blink. And the amount of times it blinks gives you the indication of how full the battery is. So that was four. And Bose sends you this handy little uh, check sheet here. Four blinks means we're over 75%. Three blinks means we're 50 to 75% full. Two blinks means we're 50 to 25%. One blink is 10 to 25, and then if it's red, you're under 10%, you should probably hook it up to power. Now guys, there's a number of different ways to connect this and use this. You can hook up your inputs through the, the combo connection here, the quarter inch TRS input, or the XLR input. You also have your auxiliary input here, which is a eighth inch mini jack. So I imagine a lot of you guys will be using this as a Bluetooth speaker and connecting it couldn't be any easier. So I'm going to grab my iPad here and I'm going to go to Bluetooth and I'm gonna go ahead and turn my Bluetooth on, turn the speaker on. I believe it connects, yeah, it connected automatically just like that in under you know 10 seconds it connected. So I have 
had a lot of luck with this in terms of reliability. Granted, I'm not taking my source too far away from the speaker, especially at a wedding, but even around the house, I've found that I can take my iPad or my phone up away from the speaker, upstairs, downstairs, and it still does pretty well. So then go into your program, music program choice. I've got DJ2 here from Algorithm, and uh, go ahead and play some music. So I should say that um, when you've got a sound source coming in that is significant or detectable by the speaker, you're gonna get this green light and right now I've turned the volume down on the iPads so it is just kind of bouncing in and out, which is still fine. And as I turn that up, you're gonna see that become more stable. So green is good obviously and if you see that going red, you wanna make sure that you back off your input or your source or whatever you're using. That means that you're clipping and you want to turn down your source. And this thing sounds phenomenal guys. It's got one six and a half inch low frequency driver and three two and a quarter inch high frequency drivers. The highs are crisp and clear and the mids are good as well. They don't hurt your ears and the low sounds really great too. It's just a great all around full sounding speaker, especially for a Bluetooth speaker, especially for something so portable. All right guys, so the dimensions of this speaker are 13 and a half inches high, nine inches wide, and 11.2 inches deep. It comes in at around 16 pounds, so it's not the lightest speaker in the world, but it also has an onboard battery, so that's gonna add to the weight. Speaking of the battery, Bose says that you can change this battery out down here on the bottom, and you can replace it, which is really a great option if you're going to invest in a battery-operated speaker. You wanna be able to make sure that you can replace the battery if you need to. The battery replacement isn't cheap though. From what I've seen on the Bose website, it is about $100, but still worth it when you consider how useful and valuable the speaker is. So the pros of the speaker are it's big sound in a little package. Bose sold their soul to the devil or are working with aliens. Who are you? Really? Really? I am just a figment of your imagination. <laughs> I don't know how they can get the sound that they get to come out of these speakers, out of these speakers. Before I was using this, I was using the Bose L1 system and I could not believe, and a lot of people in my vents also couldn't believe how the sound was coming out of that tiny little stick and that tiny little box. So this falls right in line with other Bose stuff. It sounds great. Another pro is that it's pretty lightweight. 16 pounds is heavy, but I mean, it's nothing to carry this thing around. It's got this nice handle on the top and Really, it's not that big of a deal. Um, it has three positions of use, which is really cool. You can tilt it back here in the vertical position, tilt it back, aim it up if you're maybe standing on, or maybe put this on the floor and you're performing up, or as a monitor speaker. You can set it back like a wedge here and aim it up and it's a little bit more stable this way. Or you can just set it up on its feet here. It also has a standard pull mount for a speaker stand. Another pro to this is the many uses that you can get out of this thing. You can use this if you're a busker, you can use this if you're just barbecuing around the house, you can use it if you're a mobile DJ like me. So another pro guys is the flexibility. You have three solid channels here with multiple options to get music in. Additionally, it's compatible with Bose Tone Match uh, mixer. So if you want to use it in that capacity, you can too. The biggest pro to the speaker that I see, and the reason that I picked it up, is it is a reliable battery operated system. There are becoming more and more battery operated options on the market for DJs here in terms of speakers. When I pick up something from Bose, I know that it's gonna work well. I have a lot of experience working with Bose products in the past, and I need something that I can trust to unplug from the wall that I know is not gonna die in a couple of seconds. And this speaker definitely does that. Like I said, I'm not sure if you get 11 hours out of it. I've never pushed it that far, but I do know that I can cover any event that I'm doing with the battery charge here from the ceremony to the end of the night. That is the biggest pro of this speaker and the reason that I paid $600 for it. Speaking of price, guys, that brings us to the cons and that is the biggest con is it is an expensive speaker for the size speaker that you get. If you're looking for big sound, I would not drop $600 on this speaker. This speaker is not designed to rock a party of 300 people. Even paired up, it's not meant to do that. This speaker, if you're using it 
in its intended purpose, it works great. But like I said, it is expensive and that can turn a lot of people off. Another con, depending on who you ask, is there's no RCA input or connection here. I know RCA is a super flexible input routing option and a lot of people, including myself, use it for many things. You can work around that. These inputs work great as line inputs. I use them all the time as line inputs. And then the auxiliary jack works well too, coming out of mixers or um, using microphones or instruments. So it's not that big of a deal. It's not a deal breaker for me. And the last con that I see, depending on what you're intending to use this for, depending on what your setup looks like, is you do need a speaker stand for this if you want to get it up in the air get it at your level so people at your events can hear if you're just using it as a monitor or if you're busking or something and it's not that big of a deal where the speaker is really in relationship to an audience that might not matter one other thing too this is just a like a little quirky thing that Bose did that's kind of cool I guess this uh, logo here can flip around so you can change it if, you're, if you care about that kind of thing based on its orientation. So if you are using it in the floor wedge mode, you can flip it as I just did, or you can flip it back around to the way it would sit when you have the speaker vertical. So who is this speaker for? This speaker is for DJs like myself who want to have a reliable, portable, battery operated system. It can be for buskers who want really good sound and they don't have anywhere to plug in. It can be for live sound operations for nice, crisp, good sounding floor monitors. And it can be for anybody just who wants a portable Bluetooth speaker that sounds awesome and that is gonna work really well no matter where you bring it and what you're using it for. Barbecues, beach, camping, uh, it has a lot of uses. Now, I have my reservations about bringing a $600 pro level speaker out camping, but I've seen a lot of people on YouTube that are using this speaker for just that. And why not? It certainly will work. Who's this speaker not for? Well, this speaker is not for anybody who is looking for a huge live sound or looking to rock a party of two or 300 people. Obviously, this speaker is not going to do that. Two of these speakers are probably not going to do that. However, if you have reasonable expectations for the limitations of your gear, this speaker is probably going to work for you. And this speaker is also not for those who might be budget minded, it is not a cheap speaker. If you're just looking for a small fill speaker and you don't need battery power, there are a lot of options that you can go with way below $600 that I would recommend. And speaking to DJs specifically, it's not for DJs who don't need a remote system. That, like I said, is the big reason I bought this. It is where this speaker shines, but if you don't need that, Go with something else. There's plenty other options that you can plug into the wall that sound just as good, that sound better, and that cover more people than this. I want to show you how I hook up my uh, lapel microphone for my wedding ceremonies. Now keep in mind, this is all completely wireless so far. We've got the wireless um, battery operated S1, and we've got Bluetooth connectivity um, on the iPad. And now we're going to take it even further with a wireless microphone system. This is the Audio-Technica System 10. Um, it is a wireless system for a handheld and also a lavalier and body pack. It's meant mainly for filmmakers and people who do video, but it works just amazing for what I'm using it for, which is wedding ceremonies. So I'm going to come over here and I'm going to turn on the System 10. Make sure I turn my input down on the Bose. And then I'm going to also turn on the body pack here and we're going to wait for it to pair and it is already paired and I'm going to try and do this without feedback because I'm standing really close to it but I'll give you guys the uh, kind of the demo. So I've got my settings here or I've got it hooked up the output of the system 10. Gosh my focus is just off today. Coming out into the input of the S1. Turn the reverb down, of course, you don't need any of that. Probably have to turn the bass down a little bit, treble up, and uh, we'll see if we get a little signal here. And yes, we do. This system works really well for my ceremonies. It's really small, it's easy to move around, it's easy to set up just about anywhere. And guys, it is completely wireless. There's no wires, there's no need for power. And there we go. And we are self-contained. Let's see if I can keep us from feeding back. Probably gonna feed back now. S1 guys, Bose S1. 
completely wireless ceremony system. That is it for the setup and demonstration of how I run this as a ceremony system. Stand by and I will show you my setup for how I run it as how I run it as a satellite speaker uh, at gigs. Alright guys, we are going to do a more or less a demonstration. I've got the deck set up out here on the porch. I'm going to show you how I use my Bose S1 Pro in a satellite fill scenario like in an event or a wedding where I want a speaker out into another corner of the room or another corner of the tent or another area of the grounds that I'm working. This is how I do it. So I've got the, it's a Line 6 XD V35 system. It's a wireless, um, it's a wireless microphone system but this body pack that uh, you can either order with the system or order it after the fact as an addition has a quarter inch out right there and so it can be used with microphones a lot of guitar players use them for wireless guitar rigs this used to be my main wireless microphone system but it um, just was not as reliable as I'd like it to be so now I've used it for this purpose anyway I've got this hooked into the booth out Ooh, that booth out of my mixer and I control it with the booth level right here so let's go down there and I'll show you what we've got hooked into the speaker and then I'll give you a sound demonstration okay guys we're down here at the Bose s1 as you see I've got the receiver for the Never mind my chickens down there. I've got the receiver for the XC35 system from Line 6 down here sitting right on top of the speaker. It's almost like this recess is just perfect for this receiver to sit here. And so I come out of the back of it with an XLR and I hook that into the input of the S1 here. Now one caveat with this setup is this wireless system does need power. To handle that, I run it to this Black & Decker portable power station for power. I've used this just longer than I've had the S1 and it works really well. It's uh, just as reliable in terms of providing power. Now you might be able to have a different system maybe with a wireless battery pack or something for these wireless systems or a wireless microphone system like I have for my lapel mic. Anyway guys, I'm going to set the cameras up and play some music and you'll see that this is uh, a really reliable feasible solution for a satellite remote satellite speaker Alright guys, so as you can see, um, it performs really well. That was about 82 feet. I just measured it from my booth here set up. The wireless transmitter was still transmitting at 100% according to the readout on the receiver. So I reckon I could probably go a lot farther. I haven't tried much farther than that. I've never needed to, but maybe I'll do that in a future video. Anyway, that's just one of the two or three uses that I use this for, uh, for DJing. And so... Um, if you have an old wireless mic kit laying around or um, you want to invest in a setup, that Line 6 system is super affordable and really easy to work with. Um, that's an option for you guys. So with that, I'll leave you with my final thoughts. This speaker is amazing. I would spend $600 again on it. I might pick up another one later on down the road and add it to my arsenal. I have had two years of use with this speaker and it hasn't let me down once, both in terms of the battery operation and the Bluetooth operation. Sounds great, sounds smooth, sounds clear and crisp. It covers well. And I should say I've been using this outside mostly and it covers well for ceremonies of up to 200 people, I've found. So that said, guys, if you're looking for any of those things, definitely pick this speaker up. I'll drop an Amazon link in the comment for you guys to pick it up. Not affiliate, just an easy way for you guys to get there and buy this thing. So what do you guys think? Are you using the Bose S1 Pro? Let me know in the comments. If you're not using it, 
What are you using? I'd like to know. I'm definitely curious about battery operated options here in 2020. And if you guys really wanna bring your business up to the next level, make sure that you click the link in the first comment of this video, and it's gonna take you to a download of my free guide of how to collect consistent five-star reviews for your services. Anyway, guys, I appreciate you stopping by. Thank you so much. Thank you to my new subscribers, and I will see you guys next week with the next video. Take care.